Lionel here. Thanks for listening. Lead your best life. This topic is a super important one, particularly if you're in business, but not just in business. When you're talking about relationships and people and being happy and getting what you want, but also leading a fantastic life. Uh, Have a listen to this one. Well, this morning I'm about to do something pretty interesting. I'm about to sack a prospective client. And uh, I've thought long and hard about this, but it really goes back to um, whether it be a coaching business, whether it be you're looking to employ someone, whether it be even someone being a friend or maintaining a friendship. Let me go through a few principles that I've learned over the years, and you tell me if it kind of matches with your thinking. Um, in When it comes to business, we say there's a difference between a prospect and a client. A client is someone who actually pays you money. A prospect is someone you might do business with or you might even be doing business for, but if there's no money changed hands, they're still not a client. A client actually pays money versus you do work and then you don't get the money. Um, And so that brings me on to the second point of they say the first 15% of any project is going to tell you a lot about what happens in the next 85%. The way a person does one thing gives you an insight into how they're going to do other things, not the least of which is do they keep their word? When they say they're going to do something, do they do it? I talk about the relationship between respect, response time, and taking responsibility. What I've seen over time is that if a person gives you a commitment I'll have it done by Monday or I'll get it to you by the end of the day and then it doesn't happen, particularly if it's a pattern of behaviour that if it doesn't happen once, you go, okay, that's a warning, that's a red flag. If it doesn't happen twice, now we're looking for a pattern. If it doesn't happen three times, that's how they behave. That is a pattern. And as much as I like to look at people through rose-coloured glasses, that they're nice people, that they keep their word, that they're just like me, it's so dangerous to actually judge others based on your values. If you think, well, I I would never do that, why would they do it? People are different. Not everyone has the same values as you or me. So I've got this person who said they're going to do something, they didn't do it. Then they've made excuses. Then they've uh, said to me, literally last week, Lee, I'll, I'll let you know, I'll get back to you. I've then emailed them on the day, I think it was Thursday, they said they were going to get back, and they still haven't got back to me. So I'm literally about to say, okay, you're in, it's not going to happen. We're not going to do business. I've got, I'm set to do a workshop with them on this Thursday, but they haven't got back. And not only that, they haven't paid any money. So it means I go do the workshop, I'm completely exposed. Our conditions are that, you know, you need to put uh, 50% or an agreed amount into an account like a lawyer with a trust fund. We don't start work until there's some money there. There needs to be some skin in the game, particularly in the area of coaching and training because you're asking people to step out of their comfort zone. And if they have no skin in the game, then they've got nothing to lose. You see, when we're working with people as a coach, we say, one, coaching requires you to, and you the reason you want to get a coach is I want to do something different. I need to think differently or do things differently. I need to step out of my comfort zone. It's actually part of the four C's. I'm going to step out of my comfort zone. So as a coach, whether it be I'm teaching you to play golf or play guitar or sell or be a better leader or run better meetings, you're asking me as a coach to help you step out of your comfort zone and do something different. Therefore, you need to comply. So there we are, coach, comfort zone, comply. And you need to comply to my coaching requests, my guidelines, my recommendations, because if you keep doing what you're doing and you don't try the new things I'm suggesting, nothing is going to change. And what we invariably find is if nothing changes, then they blame the coach. Why? Because in a lot of cases, they're not willing to take responsibility, to be accountable. And so the coach's job, the coach, the mentor, the parent, the teacher, um, is to, to... catalyze new actions, catalyze new thinking. So coaching, comply, catalyze, comfort zone. This person has not complied on a whole range of cases. I've also, in my terms, go, when I um, communicate, we have an agreement, get back to me within 24 hours. Because at times, sometimes when we're coaching, there are critical things. We 
see things and go, hey, you need to change that today, otherwise it's going to cost you money. Um, get back to me, even if it's just a text that says, okay, okay, uh, I'll get to get that to you tomorrow. But some response, some response is a recognition of what is the priority. How important is it that you want to improve sales or want to improve your communication or want to get new customers or want to lead a best life? Uh, it's important. I want to lead a best, better life, but uh, I'll get onto it next week or the week after. Now, the interesting thing with this person is um, they've already, besides the, the fact that they're a smoker, which, you know, people say, oh, it's, it's, it's addictive, uh, I can't do anything about it, um, they're already battling a weight problem. And we're talking about it, and this particular person said, yeah, I, I just can't give up the beer. So that in itself says, what's their level of discipline? What's their level of discipline? And what is their relationship with excuses? What's their pattern around making excuses? As someone once said, either give me excuses or give me results, but you can't have both. Give me excuses or give me results, but you can't have both. If you have a pattern of constantly making excuses, I'd be checking your waistline, I'd be checking what time you're waking up, I'd be checking what you're putting in your mouth, I'd be checking what you're reading, what you're watching on TV or Netflix. Uh, where, what is your level of discipline? Um, as Aristotle said, you know, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act but a habit. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act but a habit. So are you willing to look in the mirror, and I'm talking to myself as much as I'm talking to you as well, are you willing to look in the mirror and analyze your habits? And if you've done that exercise I've asked in the past, write up the areas you're weak in, then what are your daily habits in the areas that you're weak in? So in my case, it's more discipline around financial management, more discipline around making uh, constructive decisions rather than impulsive decisions. I mean, in the areas that I'm good at, exercise, you know, there I'm down the beach again this morning, I'm at water polo uh, yesterday uh, with family and friends and uh, connections with my the people I care about and love, uh, I'm good. But there are areas I'm not so good that I need to work on. And if anything, I need coaching and mentoring holding me accountable. So in the area of finance, I'm listening to that, uh, what's it, the guy that wrote the, the book, um, uh, Can Teach You To Be Rich, the one that's uh, on Netflix, is really good. Uh, he's coaching me and mentoring me by remote. Um so we all need coaches and mentors. Who's your coach and mentor? Uh, and and again, if we're serious about breaking old patterns and letting go of old disempowering or expensive or money wasting or you know uh, health. When I say health, I mean you know whether it be eating or whether it be you know smoking or drinking. What are the things that I need to shift and change if I'm going to lead my best life? to lead my best and healthiest life. In fact, today, National Bowel Cancer Screening Program stuff came in. Well, I'm going to have to break a pattern and, and do something about that because, you know, it's super dangerous and I've got the kit that just arrived. So I'm going to have to step out of my comfort zone and, and get involved with that. Um, the note I've got down here is flow. Uh, my good friend, Kath Sutherland, who runs uh, her business, is called Conscious Business. She talks about being conscious about the brand energy because the energy you put out into the marketplace also sets up the type of client that you that you that you attract, what you radiate, what you so Therefore, I go, okay, how come I've attracted this person? How, how did I attract this person? And was there a flow? Was there a flow and a connection? Um, because nothing worse, and I'm, I've had it, where you go, what am I doing working with this client? I'm doing all the work and they're not, there's no flow of energy. Um, Kath's fantastic on that in terms of, and Chich Mahal talks about flow, is where it's like you're going with the current, row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. You're going with the current rather than swimming against the current. As the great Dan Kennedy said, if you wake up three mornings in a row thinking about the same annoying client, get rid of the client. Life is too short. You know, I've got a friend of mine dying right now of brain cancer, and it, it's, there it is in my face. Life is both fragile and very, very temporary. So don't waste time with people where you don't have flow. 
uh, be ruthless. And because, again, Alan Weiss, the great coach to multi-million dollar consultants, says you if you're going to move up the field of into high-paying fees, you have to get rid of low-paying fees. You can't have both. You've got to be willing to sack clients. So if you're in business, how willing are you to sack clients? Um, as we said in our R Factor program, you've got A, B, and C clients, where your A clients are the 20% that give you the 80% in terms of profit, and the C clients usually, and I've had this conversation with many, many business people, rarely are the clients, the 20% that give you 80% of the profits, the same 20% of clients that give you 80% of the grief and problems. Invariably and often, it's the low-paying clients that actually give you the most grief. And at the same time, if you've got clients giving you grief and they keep giving you grief and they don't comply and they're not willing to work to your conditions, then, well, get rid of them. One of my clients, we did a lot of work saying, what was that? How did you even get involved in that contract again? And the reason was he was desperate for money and then went, what? He literally, well, he did. He had a health, a health problem, a heart problem, all sorts of things, cholesterol problem because of the stress of this client giving him grief. But again, what he'd done was set up an unhealthy contract. So look, you want to help with this, that's what we do with people to help you look in the mirror and analyze. And by the way, that particular client has gone, I'm in a completely different place four months later as a result of seriously looking in the mirror and using me as a coach, catalyzing change, getting them to move out of their comfort zone um, and he complied. In fact, he's an A-grade student. So you want to find out more, do touch base. We love helping people, particularly people in business, lead their best lives and help you flow, help your business be in flow, help your cash be in flow, help your life be in flow. There's a strong relationship between them all. But please, only touch base if you're willing to be coached, if you're willing to comply and implement so that we catalyze you moving out of your comfort zone into new areas that help you realize your full potential, realize your best life, realize your best business. Hey, thanks for listening. Touch base and do subscribe or share this with friends and colleagues because we want like-minded people. Spread the word to other people who also want to lead their best lives. See you soon. I'm Lee Farnell. Thank you.